in this position. Hello, welcome to the Life Force Movement podcast, which doesn't have another name yet, but I'm sure it will. It might. Freedom of Movement podcast. This is strange, actually, <laughs> looking at a camera. Usually it's a live video and I can see myself and there's some kind of interaction. But we were going to do this live on YouTube and there's a whole lot of hoops we've got to jump through to do that. So that'll happen. But for now, they're just kind of getting recorded. But you'll see that we're not editing anything. So it's good it's a live video. You just can't interact at all. But yeah. Hello. I am Wolf or Zach. I prefer Wolf. I'm Wolf. This is Jamie. We are some of the life force movement um and yeah we're here to just talk make some mouth noises make some mouth noises <laughs> oh, I did. hello there's no point you just said <laughs> there um yeah today we are creating a podcast because we've wanted to do this for a while and we've had other things getting in the way and I, to be honest, I've been getting stressed out about the fact that we've wanted to do this for so long and we haven't done it. And I decided we're just going to do it and throw something out there. Because that's what I do most of the time anyway. Cool. So, <sighs> Jamie, you've got, to, you've got to interact. I feel like yeah, I don't want to butt in. Say something. Butt in. Say a word. So this is going to be the start of our podcast where we're going to plant the seed of movement. Here we go. Here we go. It's our first plant the seed podcast. And I, so to start with, I am going to do most of the talking. So what I want to talk about is what is, I guess, first off, what is the life force movement? We're a holistic health and sports performance organization that consists of me and Jamie mostly on the uh, customer front. We do have some people in the background, but for the most part, it's us. And we, for the most part, well, I'm, I'm a massage therapist as well as an energy healer. And I talk to people about naturopathy and nutrition because I've studied that, give people advice on that. And Jamie's had a semi-professional career in rugby league. And so he's been through some high performance sports systems and coaching systems as well as uh, as a player and has also done coaching. But what we as a organization try and push is a movement based approach to life. So what is that? A movement based approach to life is what it sounds like. We approach life from the basis of movement. So it's probably easiest to get your head around it from a fitness point of view. So rather than thinking about our muscles and our fat and how we look, we're thinking about how our body is able to move itself as a structure. So what we are really good at is teaching someone about how the human body as a whole system is designed to move together and how to make it do that and which muscles are meant to do what. We talk to people about the fascial system, which is our interconnective system, our connective tissue that is keeping the whole body together from head to toe to fingertip, as I like to say. And we talk to people about our central nervous system and our nervous system and about how our neurological system that's driving everything is really important to look after. We talk about things about how strength is far more neurological than it is based on the mass of a muscle. And we we talk about the difference in a, the way we approach muscle gain and how we're not trying to get sore and that if we're getting sore, we're doing too much. And I don't want to go into too much detail about these specific things in this video, but I want to get the point across that that's what a movement-based approach is. So we we put on muscle when we want to, we lose fat when we want to, we train our cardiovascular systems 
when we want to, we can get faster, but everything we're doing is from the basis of movement. We're, we're trying to teach our body to move in a way that doesn't jeopardize our joints. It doesn't do damage to itself. The, most, most humans, and I, I can say that, most humans move really horribly. We're going to try and not swear in these. We're going to try yeah. and not swear in these podcasts. Try being the operative <laughs> word. But that most people move really horribly. Every step they take, they are doing a little bit of damage to their body. Every single step they take. I see people walking down the street and I'm like, I'm just going to grab you, just fix you, show you, just tell you something and you'll change something and your whole life will be better from there. But most people aren't aware. We all, well, we all know that we want correct posture, I think. That's pretty common knowledge. But how to, what that is and how to do it is not common knowledge. So we're, we're, I said that it's about fitness to begin with, because that's a good way to get the message across. But we also do a lot of work, working with people on how they do their job, how they play their sport. Is a big one but how they do their job their job is massive whether they're in this at a computer a lot of the day or whether they're doing a high a high intense labor job like building how do you do that without every time you're throwing your arm doing damage to your shoulder we also go into things like general movement how do you stand how do you walk how do you run can you squat if you can't squat we'll get you squatting can you use your squat to do things? How are you picking things up off the ground? Are you using your spine or are you lifting with the hinge of your hip? Is your head forward or is it actually sitting back over your shoulders like it's supposed to? There's so much I could put in this video, but we can't put everything in. What I'm trying to do is plant the seed. So what we, what we talk about a lot is that you can't move horribly throughout your whole day. No matter what you're doing with your day, you can't move horribly. And when I say move horribly, that includes not moving horribly. So sitting like this all day, this is moving horribly. Stillness is movement. It's, you know what? We don't stop moving. Stillness is important, but it's still a part of movement. It, and... So how you do, whatever you do, you can't move through your whole day moving horribly and then go and do an hour yoga class or go and do an hour at the gym and expect that to counteract all the damage you did to not only your physical structure but your neurological system for the rest of the day, every day. What we try and teach people is a complete shift in their mentality, a complete shift in consciousness around how they're living their life. Especially if they're in pain. Especially if they've got an injury that's not healing. Or they just have chronic pain. We get it through their head that they're causing it to themselves. And guys, a niggle is still an injury. If you have a niggle, <laughs> yeah, if you've carried a niggle for years, that's an injury and you can get rid of that. And that's for people that work, not just people that sport that play sport. Another thing we can talk about with work is that when we go and play sport, we go and spend 20 minutes warming up before we do it. How many people do that before they go and build or go and do whatever their job is? No one, but we're still moving. We're still performing as a body. Are we making our body perform like we do in sport to do whatever it is we're doing, but we're not warming up? Well, Jamie and I do. As soon as we get out of bed, we warm our body up before we do anything. We keep it warm during the day. That's and that's just part of what we do. So I, I'm I'm really hoping this has kind of got the seed planted. Because that is the basis of everything, movement, and then we can go and we can take you into what if you play a sport or you have a job, like I said, we can really break down how you're doing those things, but we can also teach you how to lift properly if you want to lift weight we can teach you definitely teach you calisthenics and teach you the right way to do calisthenics we can also teach you 
acrobatic to microbatic stuff. So like circus strongman or semi kind of gymnastics, handstands and things like that. Obviously, if you follow us, you probably know that. We can teach you ball skills. We can teach you ways to increase your hand-eye coordination. What while, else? While having fun. While having fun. Like you if you're not, it. if you don't, if you don't enjoy your workout, or well, you're working out, we don't work out. We practice. We have fun while we practice. We practice movement, and it's fun. We challenge ourselves through fun. We don't bicep curl. We do climb the climbing things and and move in, in weird ways. We teach our body how it's meant to move, get it moving better. And I guess that comes to my next point, is that Jamie and I also move horribly. We do. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. We both spent 20 plus years not understanding movement. Not doing the things that we teach because we didn't know. We both ended up with injuries that have caused... My injury itself caused the change in structure and Jamie has had surgery on him on an injury that has changed his structure. I have a fully separated AC joint on my right shoulder. So my clavicle, my collarbone, does not attach to my scapula, my shoulder blade on this side. So my whole arm and scapula are not attached to the rest of my skeleton by ligaments. It's only attached to the muscle. So that means it can sort of move into places it shouldn't. And that can be uncomfortable. So I've got to train my body to hold that right scapula correctly without causing too much tension through the neck because it can't scaffold off the collarbone like this one can. Our, our, our shoulder blade attaches to the collarbone which attaches to the sternum here. That's how the shoulder is attached. This one doesn't attach here so it's floating. And that's, this gets to the point where I want to talk about what mine and Jamie's stories are. How we got here. Why we're so passionate about what we do. Why we're pushing this, this movement. Why we try and get more people involved. Why other people who know us and have known us are so, I guess, blown away with what we can do now. Because we both can do more than what we could do before we were injured. That's the big thing. So before I was injured during high school, I, was, I played a lot of sport. I was never very heavy. I was quite a skinny person. I was fit, but I, I was fit and I guess strong, but not, I didn't know how to move. I didn't know how to eat. And I played a lot of sport and didn't know how to eat right and move right to make sure my body was putting on weight. I was quite skinny. Um, I played whole lot of sport like I said I played rugby I played cricket I played tennis I did archery I did multiple different martial arts I've done volleyball like I could go on about the sports I've played but it doesn't matter it's it's not I'm not trying to boast about how many sports I played I'm just trying to give you the idea that I was extremely active to, well not extremely but I was an active person when I I, I in particular loved rugby. Jamie and I met at Spotswood College in the first 15. Um, I also love skateboarding. Probably love skateboarding the most. Probably is a big part of why I never learned how to look after my body during that stage of my life. Probably a big part of why I didn't ever have a very serious rugby career because I was more involved with skateboarding. Skateboarding is a very very unforgiving sport concrete hurts and especially when you're jumping off big things i it's not much given concrete no it's, it's, <laughs> I, I beat myself up pretty bad um and i when i i ended up hurting my my blowing my ac joint while i was snowboarding i went up and i jumped messed it up and made it elbow first and it popped my shoulder up I've also dislocated my tailbone twice and have a dislodged rib. So my skeleton really isn't that happy, but my neurological system that's driving the muscles around it are quite smart at holding things together and moving things right. Or I, and if when they're not, 
I have the understanding of my own body to know what's wrong and how to correct things because this thing is kind of not fixed so it's a constant constant practice to keep it where it is I can't I'm not going to get to a stage where my body is like sweet I don't need to practice anymore I'm fine and I don't think anyone does I don't have the experience of having a complete skeleton so I don't know but as far as I can theorize we all need to always be practicing movement or else the body the body tries to take the path of least resistance which isn't this it's this and that's not what we want because that's causing damage over time so i was studying mechatronics engineering at, at university and ended up in a pretty bad place with my body my spine in particular was sore all the time it was had a lot to do with my shoulder but i didn't understand that at the time and I ended up taking a year off and coming home to Newcomb from Wellington because I was miserable to be honest and I met someone who taught me how to relieve my pain through movement and I was like this thing is magical and I'm gonna do this and I went and got a PT cert and I started taking the foundations of what I had learned about movement and building on it finding new tools working with new clients uh, I'm very, very lucky to have had some amazing clients, especially during my early stages, who were confident enough in me to put their body in my care and let me dive into these ailments that we're told we can't fix and fix them. Or, you know, take them from a space where they're at rock bottom, ready to give up and let them, let me give them practice to, to do and they do it and they get better and now then even their bodies are better than they were even before this is when I want to bring in Jamie because Jamie was one of those people so Jamie and I had lost contact just due to splitting off after high school hadn't heard from him and he came into a studio in County New Plymouth when I was running it and saw me and Jamie couldn't walk Two feet in front of the other it was always left foot forward and jamie's had surgery on his left elbow and he couldn't straighten it past here he couldn't hold a cup couldn't hold a cup couldn't open the jar yeah i couldn't i couldn't do this couldn't do that had no strength no coordination and i could and i had the big thing for me is i had no feeling in my pinky and the outside of my ring finger no feeling at all and was told I might get function in my elbow back slightly and I will never get the feeling back. Guess what? Now I can feel it. And it is almost completely back on my pinky. And it went straight past here and now I have a hyper flexible and he can handstand. It is now my mo more mobile and strongest elbow. So I, I'm going to let Jamie tell his story. But... I I think I just want to finish by saying that my experiences in mul with multiple sports, with multiple occupations, multiple different people, male and female, different ages, different ailments, and we always approach it from a movement base. And oh, I, us, me and the client, Jamie and the client, me and Jamie and the client, we always approach it from a base of movement from the ground up because that's how we move. And there are that, also that basis works for pretty much anything that can go wrong in the body other than a torn ligament. You can't need the surgery to fix that. But other than that, the body is really good at adapting if you know how to teach it to do that. So I just want to get it across that I'm really good at helping people. <laughs> I don't know, like, and I want to do more. Like, that's the thing. That's why we do this promotion. We want to help more people. We want to do this with thousands and thousands of women. There's the whole world. We're not the only ones in the world who do this. We are probably the only ones in the Southern Hemisphere that we know of that do it. We've had other people search for it as well and can't find anyone. I don't know if he's just 
He was just making sure we didn't just spend a whole lot of time talking shit for no reason. <laughs> hey, it's our first one. <laughs> it's our We're first one. We've got to learn. Mate. Um, but yeah, I then I just want to let Jamie take over for a moment, and I'm actually going to step outside for a second. So where do you want me to start? So I want you, I want you to tell sort of your your story. Um, probably you can start with like your career because. You have one. <laughs> you have a sporting career. No, I don't. But so there's no point in me trying to talk about that. But and then sort of talk about up until, I guess, your medical history, and then when you met me again. All right. So all through start in my childhood, I died very quickly. So throughout my whole life, I was always very active. Did a lot of sports. Like my mum was a gymnast, and. And a lot of musicals does choreography so i was always involved in some sort of movement as well as my own sport throughout my whole life um when i got to high school started to take it a bit more seriously and started to nail down try and nail down and focus on my sport um if anyone knows me during or knew me during that time they can tell you how many injuries i had so i was always injured i was playing six to ten different sports i had two one or two trainings every single day of the week plus games plus e everything from school to club to reps to national teams i was just always busy burnt out and injured no one really taught me what i was doing it was just you've got a sore leg you need to rest it you've got a sore back you need to rest it I didn't really understand what I was doing to my body at the time. So, I mainly played rugby up until then, and kind of when I was in my final year of high school, I started to spend some time in Australia. Um, so, I didn't move over full time straight away, but I would go over for a month or two at a time. Didn't quite make the sort of contract or team that I was looking for so I'd come back and go back and forth always trying to make these teams um so I did spend a little bit of time over there within junior elite systems within a professional sporting club um like I said before with my injuries I was never gonna never gonna make it long term professionally if I couldn't make it in New Zealand doing the training I was doing, how am I going to do this day in, day out at a top level without learning how to use my body and what was actually going on. So I ended up coming back to New Zealand, injured, no contract, no girlfriend, no money. I, w I had nothing. Couldn't walk, couldn't hold a glass, couldn't have a beer. I couldn't do anything. That's when I met so I had been told, like I said, I wouldn't get feeling back in my arm. Also, my ankle was, I had multiple surgeries. I've had over five surgeries uh, on different parts of my body for different things. And I just got told I was never going to be the same. That's when I met Zach. And he was at a studio with, I had seen the movement guy that, was helping Zach. The guy that yeah that I learnt the foundations from, the person that helped me fix my back, that planted the seed in me that I took and then ran with and created the life force movement, as in created my own system based on that foundation. Jamie was looking for him and found me <laughs> and was like, well, let's do this. So I guess yeah. I can kind of step back in yeah. with you now and we can both nut this out. I, I also just wanted to add that before all of this, I had done gym work before and not really got any results and really just ended up sore. And so that's, I guess that I think that's important to put in because I think some people think this is when I started training when I started the movement therapy, but I, I have experience with other systems. That's why I know that I'm so passionate about our system because we know it works and we know what doesn't. Um, yeah, so at that time, when I was in Australia, I was 
at a playing weight of 90 kgs and uh, I had to be just below 10% body fat. So I was sitting around 9.2 to 9.8 by their standard. And I couldn't do half of what I can do now. Mm. Movement wise. Movement wise. Like, couldn't move like you can. I could move in a I could go fast in a straight line. You can stretch. <laughs> I could lift a heavy bench press, but I couldn't tackle very well. <laughs> couldn't catch a ball very well. I could test amazingly. Testing. Get your testing. <laughs> testing. My numbers were off the chart. Well, that's also why I'm <laughs> really into numbers, and I'm like, I, I kind of, I'm like, I'm not against numbers, but I, I'm way more about how do you feel when you look in the mirror? Do you see the difference to what you were? Like, how do your clothes feel? How healthy do you feel? How do you actually move? Do you have more understanding of all the parts of your body and how they're sitting or stacking and how they're moving? Like, that's more important to me. And I used to try and do the numbers stuff and I just wouldn't have a passion for it. And then Jamie has a real passion for it. And he's like, it stacks, stacks, stacks. And so it's, that's sort of another part of what we do together. I guess what I want to say on the story, though, is that Jamie came and started working with me. And like I said, he couldn't walk properly and he couldn't straighten his arm. And he was quite hunched over and if I said look up straight he was like this so he couldn't actually pull his head back over his shoulders and he was not only willing to pay me but willing to do the work and a lot of it and he did and he kept doing it and within uh, not very long he was able to walk and then he came up with this crazy idea I want to play this league game in two months for my, for my, as a memorial for my friend and I was like, <laughs> you, weren't weak, you weren't walking like a week ago, but it's all right. Do you, if we're going to do the work, I'll come here. And he was like, yep. And he did it. And he got on the field. And he would have played the whole game if he didn't get a forearm to the head and get taken off. <laughs> Shot Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, up until the last, I've always been like, maybe the last 20, last 15 minutes he missed because of that. But he played the whole game up until that and his injuries that had stopped him playing weren't the reason why he stopped. And then, we, I kind of got it to a stage with him where I was like, okay, you're moving, you're not in pain, like, you can stop paying me money and turning up to do stuff with me if you don't need it. Like, you're not, I'm not here to take your money. And I guess he kind of agreed, but he also said that, you know, he brought up the fact he's got, a, he's got his PT cert. And the only reason he's never used it is because he's known about this stuff and he doesn't know how to go about it. He doesn't want to work in a place where he can't work that way. And I was just like, well, I'm kind of over it just being me. Come on, like, let's do this. And we did. We did. And he brought his ideas and he brought his opportunities and he, he brought his experience, but also opened me up to so much. And he, he also was our link to Rugby League, obviously, and got us involved with Taranaki Whanui, which, if you follow us, you'll know that we have a lot to do with, which was my introduction to Rugby League. I'd never played before. Now I'm quite knowledgeable on the, on the game, and I get to go and spend time around NRL clubs and NRL players and coaches and, and recruiters, and I get to go away on tournament with the rep teams and, and learn and not only learn but be actually adding to some, to what they're doing with the movement and with massage and it's it's been really beautiful what I guess we've done together and like I said not long ago like when we first sat down together and came up with these really just if we could do if if, if we could do whatever we wanted or we could go, you know, if, if nothing was stopping us, if money was an issue and there was no problem for us to go places, what would we want to do? And it was, there was things like work, trying to work with Whanui. There was things like trying to work up from there to go to these bigger clubs and to go to, to you know, our clubs and, and you know, eventually, because we could see on TV how bad their movement was and how much of a, 
an a opportunity there was for us to not only provide us with opportunity to work, but do some mahi with some people that really need it and change this game that is destroying a lot of people and stop it destroying as many as it is. And we kind of not long ago realized we'd actually done pretty much at least got to a, a, made a significant step on all of those things. And that was like, whoa, we're doing this. Yeah, everything we've wanted, we've either taken a step towards or we've realised that wasn't actually what we wanted. <clears throat> and, and we've gone towards something else. Yeah, and you would have noticed that this has been... Garage band. We've, you know, like there's... <laughs> that's Jamie's cell phone that we're recording this on. Like we don't have a whole lot of equipment that's going to help us do this we can't it, we just do it you also like you can go back and watch my live videos from when i started and i'm a completely different person and i've come way out of my shell and i'm far more comfortable sharing myself and i'm far more i guess a far more complete version of who i am that i'm sharing and you'll notice that jamie's slowly coming out too and sharing more and we're, I guess I'm really excited about where we're going and what we've done and, and what we're going to do. And a big part of it now is that we're really trying to get our message out. The biggest thing is that we can help. We have potential to help absolutely every single person. Absolutely all of you could benefit from spending time with us and learning from us. And letting us apply our method to your life if you're open to it and you let us do that if you come to us and ask us to but that, that means it's not for everyone because some people aren't going to like us aren't going to like our logo aren't going to like our message are just going to want to go and get the biggest muscles they can for the sake of it there are going to be people who want to do that and that's fine like they're, that, that's their life that's their journey it's their experience and it's their choice of what they want to do with their energy and if that's what they want to do that's fine i i don't agree with it jamie doesn't agree with it but that doesn't mean when saying you can't do that no. and there are going to be people who want to do that yeah, but what we don't want is people to go into that without knowing all the different variables that are involved not jumping into something like i'm going to do this particular um, discipline and it's going to be amazing for my body when no as soon as yes. you start specializing in anything that's going to have detriment but that might be what you want to do for me i love rugby league i wouldn't have changed it for anything i might have changed the methods yeah. i approach to it but i knew that's a risk and that's what i wanted to do but you need to have that understanding of what you're doing it's a really good example because a lot of people think that bodybuilding is healthy and it's not but then neither is rugby league neither is any made like it's not you're not you're not doing that to live as long as you can but bodybuilding in particular comes with a whole lot of risk and detriment to the body that i don't see i don't see what the point is you just get these big muscles that look like they're uncomfortable and you probably find it hard to find mm. clothes will move but find <laughs> clothes that fit that you can move in like at, um, <laughs> And this isn't me trying to get at anyone. I'm just trying to get my opinion across based on, on my understanding of the body. But people are going to want to do that, so they're probably not going to listen to us. So we, we, we can't actually help everyone because some people don't want us to help them. But we have the potential to help everyone. So at the moment, you might notice that we're trying to ramp up our, our, our content. I was going to say promotion, but I mean, that's what it is, but it's not, a, we're not trying to pull in millions of dollars. We're trying to help more people and trying to make money while doing that to help even more people so that we can actually get the equipment I told you we don't have. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, what we've got is a really beautiful. And we just want to share it with people. And we are. 
So we wanted to share it with even more people, and even more people, and even more people, and even more people. And we want the people we're sharing it with to want to share it with people. And we want everyone to, to start to learn more and more and more about their body and more and more and more about movement as well as actually training to do the movement better. We want to build this tribe, this whanau of people that are movers and understand that all humans are movers. All life moves. And it's when you don't know how to move that you end up detrimenting yourself, detrimenting your joints, your spine, putting pressure in places that your body's not supposed to have pressure. Your body is meant to have pressure. It's meant to have tension, but it's meant to be tense in a way where you hold your integrity. That's why there's a word that you may have heard of called tensegrity, which is tension and integrity together. We want our body to have tensegrity, not just tension. And I guess it's, yeah, I mean, have you got anything else you want to say? Nah, that's it. That's it for now. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I just want you to move. I want you to learn how to move and I can teach you. And it's like, I mean, you could just go and start trying things and figure it out. And you could just go and... Yeah, like you could just throw your same with the handstand. Like I said it the other day, you could you can learn a handstand by just trying to handstand a million times, and you'll slowly get better over time. Like it, it, you can, but the benefit, the only shortcut, you've got to actually do the work too. So the only shortcut is that if you have a trainer or a coach, can help you who not can make help you make mistakes. they can help you <laughs> not make the mistakes. They also know techniques that'll get you to where you want to go faster so whether it be a handstand or actual movement that's what we're offering we we can we are your shortcut yeah. we're a massive shortcut yeah, like there's, said, there's, <laughs> there's no it's, there's no shortcut for doing the work but you can with the method you can approach to that yeah and then in saying that like a lot of like most people could just go and throw themselves at movement and would probably never get to where we can take them because of our experience and I guess because mm. we created a space and a platform for ourselves to be able to experiment and be able to get the experience that we have, and we know it works. It's not, we didn't learn this on paper. Like we didn't, we didn't go and study it. We studied the human body itself this and isn't, we worked with it. This isn't a really good theory. This, no, isn't, this isn't reality. Real, this isn't really good on paper. This is stuff from real life experience, from talking to real people and seeing real things happen in the body. And and that does that's not that doesn't mean that this isn't based on science. Like that doesn't mean that I can't explain what I'm doing through science. I can. I can explain to you if you need to know why. If you need to know the technical the, the technicalities or the technical properties of why we're doing what we're doing and what it's doing to the body i can tell you that but we didn't learn it on paper and decide it was real we took the idea we came up with ideas based on the fundamental idea we maybe did some research on what we thought to be true found some that kind of confirmed for us that it was and then we experimented with either ourselves or with people that needed the help that we thought we could help with those techniques and it worked and if it didn't work we stopped using it or we adjusted this is that doesn't happen very often <laughs> because we've done it for so long we know what we're talking about we also don't find a new movement and then try and teach it in class straight after we just found it and that's like i i there are there are people that do that and it's crazy to think that you would teach people a movement you don't even know you can do yourself and I, that that's really important like you might see me mucking around with new movements you would have seen lately i've been trying to do a scorpion or a bent handstand thing and playing around with different ways to do it and things like that i'm not teaching it in class because i'm playing around with it I want to know that I know a whole lot about it and what can go wrong and how to not let that go wrong and and how to keep people safe before I even think about teaching someone else, except for maybe Jamie, because I trust Jamie to look after himself in the process. 
that's and that's really important to get across and you can probably hear i'm quite passionate about this because this is i guess our point of difference is the fact that we're not going to hurt you and there are a lot of people out there who are hurting people and they might not even realize they're hurting people because they are doing they're teaching the people to do the same stuff they did and they might think that the pain they're in or the issues they have with their body are normal when they're not and they've actually caused it themselves and i would say it's majority of the fitness industry yeah at all levels not not just the local at ones, all not levels. just the local person you see down down the, that goes to the gym down the street this is at all levels and this is where we combine what we've done because zach has a lot more experience with people on the ground level where i have that experience in those elite systems as a player and a coach you're doing the same stuff the same problems come up it's just exasperated is that the right word yep in the elite system yeah you know, the elite system doesn't make it better it exasperates it like and and it's like we've done we've done work with junior nrl players well, yeah, players that are in NRL clubs in the junior grades, junior NRL players. And we've done work with the players in front of staff from those clubs. And the, everyone there is like, whoa, this makes a whole lot of sense. Why is nobody else doing it? And then they get us back because nobody else is doing it even at that elite level yet straight away they're like this is what we should be doing why like you know they almost freak out because we explain why we do what we do and they're like well we're doing this isn't that bad and we explain yeah and we explain why and they're like oh stop that and it's it's what what we are doing is on the leading edge of health and sport performance in the world and if you watch any of the teams who have players with bugger all injury rates their re-injury rate is really down the injuries they do get are from trauma not from repetitive injuries or preventive like well yeah preventative injuries it's from outside trauma and you preventable. yeah preventable you actually that's where the tendons tear they're not sore and weak and i can't remember what else i was going to say with that and it's all right because i felt like all the, all the conversation we ended just went out the window <laughs> <laughs> but it's probably yeah. it's probably a good place to end this like we don't need to go on and on this is our first podcast yeah but I, I guess if you've got any questions, please comment. Please tell us. Let us know if you've got any anything you want us to address. If you've got an injury you want us to address, let us know, and we'll because we're gonna keep creating this content. So if you give us, like, you can end up getting us to answer your questions for nothing, which is cool because then we get to help you, and it's also giving us value because it gives us content to create. And that might help a whole lot of other people that are experiencing something similar. But, yeah, you, you've got to tell us. Yeah. So, if you have something that's wrong with you and you've been watching this and now that, now that you start to hear about it, let us know because this is your opportunity. You don't have to pay to come and see us in class. You can ask us here. This is your opportunity. So, take it. Also like this video hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell so you know when we make a post always wanted to do that <laughs> yes at the life force movement on all platforms or at wolf tlfm one word or at jamie tlfm on all platforms find us on youtube it's just the life force movement like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell <laughs> thanks guys and with that i think we're good to go and end and thank you all that are gonna watch this hit us up instagram facebook youtube we want to hear from you we need to hear from you 
アルハヌイ・サキテ、あの、